Доброго вечора, ми з України. Hello boys and girls and welcome back to Shanka Show. Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогі товариші. В ефірі програма Ушанка Шоу. Comrade Sergey is here and he is ready to tell you some interesting details about Soviet education. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I have a playlist called Soviet Education with over 20 videos where I covered my history of going to daycare, kindergarten, school, stuff like that. So you're welcome to check it out. I'll post the link below this video. But today I would like to talk to you about one of the most important talking points of modern days tankies, people who love socialism, who love Soviet Union, although they never had a chance to live there, and it's free education. And I can confirm, back in my day, the college education was free of charge, and in fact, when I became a student of Kiev Polytechnical Institute, Besides not paying for my education, I was also getting a stipend of 55 rubles per month for being a good student, having a good grades. But it wasn't always the case. Do you know that from 1940 all the way till 1956, college education in the Soviet Union was not free? And not only college education, people had to pay to attend high school and trade schools in the Soviet Union. So that's 1940 to 1956. And do you remember who was the leader of the Soviet Union back in those years? That's right. Comrade Stalin took away free education from the Soviet people and only Nikita Khrushchev back in 1956 made education free again. If you never heard about that episode in the Soviet history when education was not free, don't feel bad, I also had no idea because back in my day, in, during the history lessons in school, they never ever mentioned anything about Stalin uh, making education for profit. I don't know if there was any profit, but wasn't free anymore. So what happened? On October 2nd, 1940, there was an executive order number 637 issued about making education in high school, they call it Starshaya Klasy Srednik School, and colleges, so institutes and university, making a, a paid education and also a change in the way the stipends are being paid. So this is October 2nd, 1940. When I was researching this topic, I found a quite instant explanation why it was done. Apparently, it's because the war was just around the corner, so Soviet government needed all the money they could get, and that's why they canceled a free education. But in October of 1940, the Soviet Union was already participating in the World War II on the wrong side at that time, because a year prior, in September of 1939, together with Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union attacked Poland. But you don't need to look elsewhere for the reasons of this executive order, because right in the beginning it states, учитывая возросший уровень материального благосостояния трудящихся, which translates as considering the increase in financial well-being of the Soviet workers. That's why we got paid education, because Soviet workers had increase in their financial well-being. Well played, Comrade Stalin. So let's take a look at the cost. So in order to finish the high school, so we're talking about 8th, 9th, and 10th grade, if you live in Moscow and Leningrad, as well as the capital of the republic, so like Kiev would be also part of that price point, parents had to pay 200 rubles per year. In all other cities, as well as villages, the price of finishing high school is 150 rubles per year. So that was a high school education, 200 rubles per year or 150 rubles per year. Now, in order to go to college or uh, trade school, if you live in Moscow, Leningrad or the capitals, it's a 400 rubles per year. All other cities, 300 rubles per year. Kind of interesting detail. If you go to the college to study music or theater, the prices actually was higher, 500 rubles per year. 
So Comrade Stalin wanted people to stop getting useless liberal education. So of course now we have a question, was it expensive? Well, if you consider the fact that the average salary for the Soviet worker was around 300 rubles per month. So you pay 200 rubles a year for the high school and you make 300 rubles per month. It's not really cheap, but if you compare cost of college education like in the United States right now versus 1940s in the Soviet Union, that looks pretty cheap, 400 rubles for the whole year. So pretty much one and a half month of your salary will cover the whole year of college. That's pretty decent. But I don't know what was the cost of college back in 1940 in America. But despite the fact that prices don't look that expensive, there was still a 50% drop of young people finishing high school and young people finishing colleges. So Soviet workers didn't have a lot of spare cash to afford for their children to go to high school and to go to colleges, especially, I believe, in the villages, because collective farm workers, if you remember, they didn't get paid much or at all. So they didn't have, you know, 150 rubles to pay for their kids to finish high school, or especially to have 300 rubles to pay for college. And another interesting detail is that Comrade Stalin never bothered to cancel paid education even after the war was over in 1945. He didn't do anything only after he passed away in 1953. Nikita Khrushchev uh, canceled paid education in 1956 and made it free again. And generally 1940 was a very ugly year for the Soviet workers because besides this executive order about canceling free education for the high school and college, there were also other executive orders. For example, the Soviet workers used to have a six-day work week, which means you work for five days, then you have a day off. In 1940, more precisely June 26, 1940, it was changed to the seven-day work week. So you work six days, then you have Sunday off. Then it was outlawed to quit work. So if you just leave work without permission, like I don't want to work there anymore, call it quits, you can get to prison for between two to four months as a punishment for quitting your job. As well, if you play a hooky, it's six months punishment work when your pay being deducted, so you're getting 25% less salary for missing a day of work. And I believe Robert Robertson explains the situation in his book black on red, my 44 years in the Soviet Union. He talks about it because he worked in Moscow that time, how people were horrified like to be late for work or miss work. So they would even like do some little crime, maybe like break the rules of crossing the road to be arrested because that's a good excuse that you were late for work. So you don't get punished and uh, get your pay uh, taken away. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. As always, please don't forget to like this video, share with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Потому что если дороги будут, то по ним неприятель проедет. И прямо в сердце России попадет. Я с ними согласен абсолютно.